Well, I've got to continue on with my gaming memories phase here. Hi there, it's Brett Harmed here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And you can see in this playlist here, I mean, they're all personal vlogs here, but I have all my gaming memories videos compiled there. So if you want to relive some gaming memories, I have them all here, and I have a few more to come in my personal vlog series here. But this is kind of my series within a series here. As you know, when I planned out all my topics I want to talk about, I just thought about the game memories. And like this one, this will be personal vlog number 66. I'm going to be talking about the Nintendo Wii, which is essentially the system after the GameCube here. So what I'll do here is I still actually own the Wii right now today. And I still have my library games here. But I'm also going to go over the list of virtual console games that I listed here because I don't want to miss anything. And the idea is what I have for my gaming memories, personal vlogs here, is this one is 66 here, where I'll talk about the Wii here. 67, I'm going to talk about the Nintendo DS and 3DS. And then 68, that's where I'm going to be recapping everything all together here. And one of the things I plan to do is I have missed some titles from my previous gaming memories, as I mentioned in my playlist there, that, uh, you know, if I absolutely remember everything, it would be a much longer video there, but I think I'll do the overall what I missed and my future in gaming on if I plan, you know, to make some new gaming memories here. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey here, Home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders there. Just to make sure you like and subscribe and follow along, especially with my social media links in the description below there. That's the main thing I do is I recap games, sports, stories. I recently did some trade retrospects for the Calgary Flames there. But personal vlogs, which is where I talk about anything, take a break away from my uh, Calgary sports, but you can't take the sports fan out of me. But I also do attempt a comedy, and, you know, I also share my experiences. Let's say if I'm on the road or at a sporting event, you know, when you pull out your smartphone or camera there, you know, especially, you know, my favorite site, the Canadian Rockies, Mel Robson there. And, uh, you know, if you see a beautiful, clear day, I have to capture that, so I have it in my library there. So, if that sounds like anything you want to watch and follow along, if you're new or returning, thanks for watching. Just make sure you subscribe and follow along here. So let's get to the my gaming memories for personal vlog number 66 it is the Nintendo Wii here. And also what I gave you my future plans here. I did not get the Wii U for two reasons here. One, well as you get older and you have more responsibilities and especially with the crummy economy that my fine city has been under and my fine province, you know, you just don't have as much money to spend on gaming as a hobby here. That's one reason there, and, you know, responsibilities, life gets in the way here. But it's been fun to recap memories and share with you guys and share with my collection I still have. But also the fact that maybe it was a good call I did not get the Wii U. I actually thought of a third reason here, but the second reason, it sounded lame. The Wii U. And actually, one tech gamer that I follow, Review Tech USA, I mean, he's definitely a funny guy, and talks about anything else too and he's definitely been streaming more there and let's just say he loves seltzer and he's a funny guy there but uh he also says that uh you know the wii u just it was a lame name and, i mean it sold consoles but it didn't sell as many as the wii it didn't seem as revolutionary with the touch screen and the and then the fact the third reason was i didn't want to give up my gamecube bad yeah, games i mean at least the wii which is where my last first vlog where I talked about the GameCube there. I just didn't want to give that up. So that's why I did not get the Wii U for those reasons there. So uh, first thing I'm going to do here for my gaming memories is I'm going to look at my list of the virtual console here. Because it was actually nice that they had a virtual console too where you can download games from the WiiWare store. And uh, I know, as I know it's no longer active and gee I still had some points in there. So you're welcome Nintendo for... That money there, but I don't like Nintendo sometimes when you're still archaic on, and you know, it's the most the system that I'm the most nostalgic for, and I think had the best games overall. But they definitely don't seem to, you know, embrace the emulators as much as the 
other competitors there, and, and Nintendo doesn't seem to, they seem to be more airtight with their, uh, you know, compilation games, and there's definitely one in my Wii collection that I think Nintendo really screwed up on and definitely missed out on an opportunity. So when it comes to the virtual console here, and also you got various games, I mean, it was definitely interesting how they got the rights to uh, all these other games and systems here. However, they didn't seem to bring back those rareware games that now Microsoft owns, and that's why I have most nostalgia for the N64 here. So going this way, I put it in alphabetical order here. But the first game that I had on my virtual console on the Wii here is Columns. That's the uh, the classic Sega Genesis game, or the gem blasting, gem blasting game there. I mean, it was kind of just, you know, another twist on Tetris, capitalizing that. But ultimately, that's what spawned all these other, you know, Mass 3 games, including Candy Crush, which, uh, you know, is definitely a crack for, you know, electronic crack there. So, uh, Columns, it was definitely nice to have that game. But, like, digitally, and this is kind of where you start seeing the digital age now, where you're not going to see much, you know, physical copies anymore. The next game here, I had Earthward Jim, the uh, Sega Genesis game. That was definitely a wacky game. Definitely a lot of shooting in that. I think it was Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. I didn't actually remember playing Earthworm Jim when I actually had the console. I think it was on both uh, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, but uh, I have Earthworm Jim. And it was a wacky game. I, I, it was fun to play. I mean, it just, it's wacky. It's, it's original. It's neat. And then the next game here, I have F-Zero, the 16-bit version, the original 16-bit version on the Super Nintendo here. I, uh, had fun with that game, you know, from uh, playing it at a friend's house there, and uh, it was a futuristic uh, racing game there. I'm not too sure which one is better, the uh, the original one, or the 64, or, or the X, with the more modern systems here. But there was something with that first one that just... And also I remember playing that on the uh, Game Boy Advance too, and, you know, I think, I, when the more I think about it, I mean, it seems like... Now, maybe it's just the first one. Just like, you know, you know, I always say I want the Flames to go back to their original jerseys full time. Maybe it's just the original, what I grew up with. I felt that was the best, and it was hard to match that. So that's F's earlier. Then the next game I definitely had fun on the Super Nintendo at my friend's place was Gradius 3. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just love that game. It just, uh, you know, I, I mean, I... <laughs> I just love how you build up your ship there, but then it always it kind of teaches you that harsh reality of life. That if you have if you go through a rust patch and then you uh, you die, you have to start all over again. That that game for some reason it had awesome music, and you pick your combo of uh, weapons and that. It was a Konami made that game, but that's how the, that's how I look back on how that game taught me that lesson there. And Gradius Three, it, it was a fun game. I'm definitely glad to have that. I remember when I crashed, like, oh, i got to start cheap again, <laughs> again, again. That's a uh, 12-year-old me. <laughs> yeah, fun to relive. And then the next one is the Link, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. That's the uh, the SNES, SNES version, the SNES version, the 16-bit version, which, yeah, I still say it's a great game. It's definitely a lot more difficult than the, uh, the NES one. I actually have not finished that game, I mean, combination of... Don't have as much time and difficulty, you know, pick up and play there, but, uh, you know, some, I mean, I still say, and I said in my previous Gaming Memories videos, that the Ocarina of Time is the best Zelda game. Some say that one is still up there, and I think it still ages well, considering that we're almost 30 years from when it was made. I mean, yeah, keep in mind, you know, graphics and that, but it actually was a nice uh, link to the past, and it definitely spawned on other... Uh, iterations of the game there. Mario Golf, that was the N64 version, I remember playing that one. It's just a fun, quirky golf game for the, you know, Nintendo Kingdom there. I think that, looking back, I think that was the uh, best Zelda game, or not Zelda, Mario Golf game, the first one that started it all there. I like the one that was on the uh, Game Boy Advance just because the RPG element to it, but uh, that was a, a sweet, fun Nintendo-ish golf game. And then, of course, I had to get Mario Kart 64, which I say is the second best, or I'm, I'm going to say third best in the Game Boy Advance game, because I think Double Dash actually, I like that one the most. Then you got to go back to the original one. 
and then Mario, then Mario Kart 64. But I played Diddy Kong Racing first for the N64, and that was a better game, just all the other elements they put in with the action racing and all the three. But that's definitely a solid uh, Mario Kart game, especially if you're new to the genre there. But that's Mario Kart, the original one, which uh, I think, I'm not too sure if it was on, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to get there. Which ultimately spawned on that, uh, you know, you know, kind of genre there. So now let's get to the WiiWare games that I have here. And you remember when I said I also liked Mega Man? Was my favorite games growing up in 8-bit? Well, WiiWare brought Mega Man back to his finest form in 8-bit. Which they had Mega Man 9 and 10 there. There were WiiWare exclusive games there. But Mega Man belonged back in the 8-bit. I mean, this is me going back to my jerseys and I want the original Flames jerseys back. But Mega Man belongs in the 8-bit era. Mega Man 9. Woo! <laughs> Oh, my butt still hurts from trying to play that game. I haven't finished that game, and oh man, I mean that it's it's the Mega Man. It's almost like Mega Man Two. I still think Two is the original one because it's not as difficult. But oh man, if you want a great throwback to Mega Man as purest, hardest form, Mega Man Nine is for you there. And then you know now with the elements of connectivity and challenges and that. There's actually one challenge where you can play through the whole game without getting hit once. Oh, how do you... Oh, <laughs> that's definitely hardcore. But yeah, it's definitely fun to watch the... Uh, you know, on this platform, Mega Man 9. You know, it had a great soundtrack. It, it is almost like what Mega Man 2 would have been if it was made with those elements today. And then, of course, I got Mega Man 10. Which, uh, you know, I, I've seen videos of Mega Man 11 there, and I'm kind of mixed on... Uh, I mean, maybe I'm just a purist, or that's what I grew up with. But I, I, when I think Mega Man, it has to go back to the, uh, you know, 8-bit 8 8-bit 8 era with the awesome music. I mean, the rock, paper, scissors element of it where, you know, you choose your own adventure. You beat the boss in their themed level. That's what also made Mega Man awesome was the themed levels. I mean, for example, uh, you know, Galaxy Man and Mega Man 9 there, it's a space theme. So everything is spacey, and then you, uh, where you have Jewel Man, you know, it's kind of in the diamond mine. And then when you get to the Dr. Wily stages, they always have those, you know, awesome music too. And uh, how it mixes in all the elements and the, you know, the enemies, and, and of course you got those blocks. And that's uh, one kind of element of the Mega Man game there. But 9 and 10, I had that Wii where 10 was a little easier, and it was easier, easier to finish that one. Actually, 10 kind of had a nice, uh, I mean, because some Mega Man games there, you go through like four stages in the Dr. Wily stage, and then you, you beat the eight bosses again, and then you beat Dr. Wily again. And sometimes, you know, you see him begging, begging for mercy, and it's like, I won. And then suddenly it was a robot, and then you see one more stage. Mega Man 10 kind of makes it say, you're not quite done yet. So uh, those are my WiiWare games there, and definitely, I mean, now they've repackaged them on collections there. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's Mega Man has finest. He belongs in 8-bit, no matter what, because I've seen enough Mega Man games where uh, they've done the 3D, and it's not the same. It's, Nintendo at least done that well with Super Mario, and now it works, but not with Mega Man. And then I had the original Metroid, the NES version. I mean, that's definitely one of the uh, classic games. I never actually had the cartridge myself there. I remember, you know, trading in with a friend in the neighborhood, but... I, uh, you know, I sort of liked it, but uh, I wasn't hardcore in it. I don't know, maybe it's just I hit game saturation, too. So that's one of them. Star Force, that's the, uh, I'm trying to remember Star Force here. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think that's a, a shooting game uh, for the uh, any. And I, don't, I actually don't remember that. I just, I never have a Star Force here. But then I have Star Fox 64 there, which I still think the original one on the Super Nintendo was better, but it still was a great game for the uh, Nintendo 64 there. I remember, I think I didn't own it, but I rented it. It was fun. And then, of course, they have Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, the original one. The original one, my most nostalgic for, which I've said that in my NES video. Number two, it was a nice, it was still a great game, despite being, some people say it was the uh, dark sheep of the three, and, you know, and then you learn about it was... Ripped from the Doki Doki Panic there, but you know it was a it was a it was a nice different game. 
It was kind of like, you know, how Zelda had the original Zelda, and then the number two was a side-scrolling. So, and then three was the best one. It was definitely the deepest game. It had a little bit of the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure there, but uh, three is the best one. And then, of course, the what was supposed to be the Super Mario 2 that the Japanese thought would have been too difficult for the U.S. players. They lost levels. So, uh, yeah, that... Uh, that one would have been a nice second one if it actually, if, you know, if we went back and another Back to the Future reference, bring out your DeLorean, go up to 88, and instead of having that Super Mario 2, that would have been, it still was great to have uh, those both, but you get the best of both worlds now. And then, of course, I got the original Super Mario Kart there that I alluded to there. That one was a great game, and that started it all. And the fact that, uh, you know, I might have met, forgot to mention it on the, uh, Game Boy Advance memories there, but I remember having the uh, Super Mario Kart Advance on the Game Boy Advance there. It was also a deep game. And then, of course, Super Mario World. The, uh, that game, you know, it was a launch title for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. That one still, even 30 years, almost 30 years, that one still is a great game. Still ages well, and you still get giddy playing it, and, you know, it's just, you know, I just love how they expanded on from the NES, and Different worlds there, and, you know, different secret exits there. It's, I mean, it's even fun if you just, you know, want to grab your chips and drink a beverage and hit up YouTube and just watch someone play that game, and that's definitely a fun game. And then I, I actually didn't mention this in my NES video, but I think I'll mention it again in 68. The I had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This game, for some reason, I actually remember having this game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, some reason this game seems to get bad rap. It, it was actually a great game. I know that uh, if you go at Cinemasker, the angry video game nerd, James Rolfe, he's he's another you know great YouTuber, funny guy. He bashes this game, and uh, I mean yeah, there's some traps in the game, and it's a nice challenge. But uh, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, I remember watching the cartoons there and had the movies there. You know, with Splinter the Master and. Donatello, Leonardo, Raphael, and Donatello, and Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. Donatello is definitely the best character. You're kind of screwed if you don't have Donatello anymore in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but this is the original game. And you get to play each turtle, and sometimes you strategically play it. But I actually liked that game. Yeah, it was challenging, it was tough. But I remember the satisfaction of being that game back in the day, and I mean, yeah, that seaweed level. It seems, I mean, it seems a little harder now. Maybe it's just you know, yeah, don't have as much time playing it. But uh, yeah, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I couldn't believe I forgot that in the NES. But I only mentioned that in my '68 video there. And the last one is one of my favorite games from the uh, Namco Museum, the Tower of Draga. That's definitely a, a fun coin-op game there. So that was all my uh, virtual console games. So that's kind of the I had to I had to uh, go through the list here and talk about those games because uh, I definitely would have forgotten some and I'm trying to uh, you know give me myself less work to do when I do number 68 here when I talk about what I missed overall and future of gaming there so that's the virtual console now let's get to my collection here so uh, I still have the discs here and I definitely have more games than I did on my GameCube. But uh, these are the games that I still have. Starting with the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. This is, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a casually, you know, I bash soccer and I do have some friends that uh, play soccer and, you know, just jokingly, I, I uh, tell them that soccer is boring and stupid. And there was one lady that I went to college with and still friends with. Sometimes I say, soccer is so boring and stupid. And I sometimes try to make it so she says, Hey, you take that back. Although you got to be careful of that too, because one time she might say, "Hey, you take that back," and she'll actually be serious, serious. But uh, yeah, this was a fun, deep soccer game. Nice soundtrack, all over all there, especially Kanon. That was one of my first videos that I uh, put on this channel. Was when I saw Kanon in 2010 at the uh, Africa Festival, fresh off of this tournament there, where the waving flag was one of the official songs of this tournament here, and. Proudly, he's further from Somalia, Kanon, but, you know, it's honored to have him as a Canadian now as a Canadian citizen. So that's the first game here. Second game here, well, it's a niche game. I'm, 
I mean, I, bowling is still in my blood. Just don't have time to go bowling here, but, you know, Brunswick Pro Bowling. This is a, this is a good game if you're a bowler and you like bowling. I mean, it's 10-pin, you know, with the PBA. You know, you just develop your player and go through tournaments there and build your career. I actually like this one and still enjoy it when I do play it, but, uh, I don't know. This is the you have to be a bowler. It has to be in your blood. I think it's personal vlog number 28 that I 27 or 28 there that I actually made one where I talk about bowling is still in my blood. But you know, just being up early for work and not near even near a bowling alley and maybe some of this culture is dying. But uh, I just don't have time and I definitely have bowling apps on my phone here. But that's a I think if you if it's in your blood and you like bowling. That would be a game for you, but for a casual gamer, you know, it's like, mm, meh. Yeah. Alright, here's the Donkey Kong Country Returns here. This kind of just updates the Donkey Kong series from the Super Nintendo. But yeah, this is a fun adventure game. It's just an update of that. I mean, Donkey Kong is kind of the underrated characters for Nintendo here, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is a... I'm not too sure what is the best Donkey Kong games, but uh, this was definitely a nice one to put it on this platform. And of course, uh, I have some Zelda. I've got uh, Skyward Sword. This one, I didn't have as much time to play this one, but uh, it's still a decent game Decent game here. I mean, once I, you know, the Ocarina of Time being the first one to play it, and I mean, the Wind Waker is also a close one, the Majora's Mask, and then, of course, you got the originals, Link the Past here, but, uh, I mean, these games get deeper and deeper and bigger and bigger, which is good in one way, but when you don't have as much time, it's bad, but uh, I definitely have my Zelda fix here, the Skyward Sword here, and more Zelda, Twilight Princess. This definitely, you know, this definitely started turning Zelda into more of a dark theme, and, uh, you know, I... I know my sister is a more hardcore Zelda fan than I am, and I know sometimes I have to be with her, but I remember she said one time this was the best Zelda game, but that was like uh, almost 10 years ago, where there's more Zelda games that have come out here. But uh, when I saw the trailer, I got excited. I'm like, wow. I mean, this had a dark theme to it, but uh, Ocarina of Time still the best one. I mean, okay. You know, I say what I liked about... Uh, Nintendo with Myron Sonic together. Well, there's Myron Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games, and this one's definitely keeping this one because uh, it has Vancouver. Go Canada! And uh, while we did not own the podium as a tournament having the most medals, we owned the top of the podium in 2010 there, and you know what? That's one of the reasons why it would be fun if Calgary were ever to get the Olympics again, because we've, we take it more seriously now than we did, but the legacy of the Vancouver 2010 Games is still prevalent in the Olympics now that Canada is winning more medals both summer and winter in. Hopefully we'll do well in Tokyo this year. So uh, I got Mario Sonic at the, it's kind of a, you know, play, it's not an accurate, but it's a playful, uh, you know, kind of, you know, how Nintendo plays their sports games up. But this is definitely a playful uh, of the Olympics there in, you know, Vancouver. I mean, go Canada. And of course, I gotta get the Wii one. Mario Kart Wii, just another update to uh, the crazy action, bigger, and of course, there's always the Rainbow Road there. But uh, yeah, this adds more of the elements from like Diddy Kong Racing here. But this is just another evolution of the series. Steering wheel that was just kind of a cheap ploy that came with it. Didn't really do anything. Oh, see, I didn't mention this on the GameCube because. I got the Metroid Prime Trilogy here in the collector's case. Didn't have as much time to play that, but... Oh, uh, this is definitely a collector's item here. Where you have all the Metroid Primes in here. So this covers the GameCube and the Wii here. So uh, I'm definitely going to be hanging on to this one here. Oh yeah, I mentioned this a few times. Uh, I know I had it on the PlayStation Portable here. It's an underrated game and it's a fun puzzle game. I have on the Wii, the Mercury Meltdown Revolution here. I remember buying this for like one of the cheaper, it's not a dunce title here, but this is underrated. You know, especially if you like, uh, you know, navigating through puzzles here. And this gets you, you know, especially if you're setting art and the color wheel. This definitely uh, mixes the color. This is an underrated game. I mean, it doesn't seem much. You're just a metal mercury ball and 
you got to go through, uh, you know, colored gates to unlock certain levels or go to that finish there. This is underrated. I recommend you picking it up. It doesn't seem much, but it's, it's actually a fun game. And of course, uh, you know, this was the new one. Of course, it's in my favorite color. The new Super Mario Brothers Wii here. I mean, I'm not too sure if I like this format continuing on, but, uh, you know, it kind of gives that mix of that side-scroller faster content there. But, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's Mario. It's always a great game, other than some of those third-party launch star like suit. Hotel Mario was one, but this one definitely uh, started it. But then when it keeps getting repeated, it, uh, it seems... Actually, speaking of this... There'll be one game I wait. I hope that they make, and I think it's something Spanish. And actually, it's better. It's a better Super Mario collection. It uses this style, and it has like the original game Super Mario World, the Game Boy games in this format. If you just type in like New Super Mario Brothers HD, and you can tell it's Spanish because all the subtitles now are all Spanish. I'm not too sure if it's a game hack there, but it has a better Super Mario compilation. But it uses this format, and I was like, I would like that if, uh, if I existed and it was in English. Well, I got a couple of these games, uh, Need for Speed Pro Street here. You know, I kind of continued on with this. This is what EA Sports, you know. I, th I, I think the original versions on the PlayStation were better, but these were okay, you know, for casual racing and customize your cars and fantasize, uh, Cards that you'll never have. And of course, this is where I get the, the sucker of being nostalgic and like video game arcade collections here. Namco Museum Mega Mix here. This is definitely, uh, you get your original games, you know, the Pac Man Rally Axes and Pac Man uh, Dig Dug here, but uh, Galaxian, but you, know, you definitely get some update of Rally Axe here. So uh, this is definitely another update to making Namco classic games. Even cooler. It even says that here. Classic just got cooler here. And uh, this is definitely uh, a nice title there as well. Speaking of uh, arcade classics here. One system that not many people had. Just because it was too expensive here. Is the SNK arcade classics here. And actually many of these games are on here. And it's cheaper to buy it on this format here. And this is volume one. And I think this is the only one. All these games, because there was a Neo Geo actually on the virtual console, and that's why I didn't buy any Neo Geo games, because they're all here. So this is kind of a, you know, a way to, if you're a Neo Geo fan, to get this. It's a nice collection for the Neo Geo and SNK, so uh, I definitely recommend this one here. I mean, you got uh, Art of Firing, Baseball Stars, I mean, you got uh, Metal Slug, that's definitely one of the uh, big selling titles for the Neo Geo there, King of Fighters there. So, uh, yeah, if you want to relive the Neo Geo, especially the intro, that do 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 thing, it's all in here. Oh, here's some uh, wacky games here. I'll put it in order here. Raymond. Rabbit and Rabbits. This one is just as wacky as Earthworm Jim here, but the... Uh, yeah, Raymond. I mean, I actually liked Raymond. I know I had the... Uh, I might have not mentioned it, uh, well, actually I'll probably mention it in the next episode or next first vlog where I had the Rayman on DS here. But yeah, the Rayman with the Ubisoft, I definitely like the original Rayman here, but this cat picks up the wackiness with those damn rabbits. <laughs> of course, you know, this one takes it on the road with a sequel. Damn those rabbits. Go Rayman. Well, more uh, sucker for classic games. I actually remember playing these. Remember when you played pinball? Well, you got the Gottlieb Pinball Hall of Fame or Williams Collection. This definitely has a live. I remember playing some of these uh, pinball. I mean, Crave Entertainment, it's also the same company that made the uh, PBA game here, but you definitely get uh, some pinball collection here. This has been on, like, all the consoles here. But, uh, you know, if you like to relive some of these pinball games, and I remember actually playing these live. Wait, now you got them right here. I also got the second one. Oh yeah, Gottlieb Collection. I think it's the same company, but uh, Crave Entertainment made it, so Pinball Hall of Fame. 
definitely if you enjoy playing some classic tables here, you got them right here. And of course now I gotta get some Sonic. Here's one adventure. I mean they not as good as the classic games, but uh, I still like Sonic. You got Sonic Colors here. I mean that's definitely uh, another uh, wacky adventure with the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and I grew up with Dr. Robotnik in the original Sonic games, but now he's called Eggman. I got some more Sonic games. Oh yeah, Sonic at least. This is a definitely a, a darker darker version of Sonic here. You know, he's kind of like the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, day and night. So this is Sonic on the dark end, another adventure game. And then, oh yeah, this is kind of the uh, Sega version of Mario Kart, Sonic and Sega. Stars racing here, so uh, this is basically Mario Kart with uh, you know all the Sega characters there. I mean, you can thank Mario Kart for spawning these games. All right, this is where I think Nintendo dropped the ball here on this compilation. I have the Super Mario All Stars 25th Edition in the special box here. It has a nice orchestra album here. But where they dropped the ball on this one for this being the 25th anniversary. You know where the Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo? Well, here it is. That's all it is. Basically, the exact emulator of the Super Mario Brothers on here. This is where I mentioned that, you know, game that's in Spanish there. Where, yeah, have the, uh, you know, original games, including the last levels. They should have put Super Mario World on there. They should have put the Game Boy games on there. They should have found a way to put all the... Because they own the rights. They should have put all the uh, Super Mario Classic games on here for the 25th anniversary year. I mean, I think they dropped the ball on this one. Sorry, Nintendo. I mean, it's a nice collectible, but... Uh, yeah, you just basically rehashed the Super Mario All-Stars for Super NES and put it in this package here. But it's a collectible, but... Uh, they definitely could have done a better job there. However... This is where Nintendo kind of redeems itself. It kind of brings up on the Super Mario 64. Here's the Galaxy. Oh, that's definitely a... This is definitely a beautiful game. You know, he's out in space. And, you know, casually like space as well. And, uh, you know, this expands on the concept from Super Mario 64 here. So, and has nice orchestrated music here. So there's one. So, yeah, let's take what I just said. Number two. Just expands on it. With Yoshi there. So this is the Super Mario Galaxy 2 there. So, uh, while well, they dropped the ball in the 25th Anniversary Edition, they made up for it with these games. Now, I'm getting close to the end of the collection here. Well, this was actually... It's a fun party game, but uh, this definitely was a ploy just so you could buy another remote. We play. This, you know, this is kind of a nice basic game, how you can get used to playing the uh, Wiimote there. So, uh... I mean, it bundled in. That's why it sold a lot of copies, but it, it's actually a good game there. And, uh, you know, I guess you used to play with the remote there. So, uh, nice way if you're going to, nice way to buy another controller. And, of course, uh, here is the expansion with the Motion Plus. We play Motion Plus, so, uh, with the Motion Plus attachment there. So, here's that. Uh, so, I think it was packaged with that as well, so... Did it again. It's a nice, fun, you know, party game. And actually, I go into the bottom of my collection here. Well, I bought the Wii. And I actually remember uh, I waited a long time to finally get one in stock. And this was still in 2008 where uh, stores couldn't keep it in stock here. But I got it packaged with the Wii Sports. Well, here's their Wii Sports Resort here, which essentially gives it that summer theme to it. And I want, the one game I find that's very funny in this one is that frisbee game. You know, you throw the frisbee, you hope your dog gets the dog, the dog eventually will get it, or you hope he gets it. He gets that virtual, uh, you know, you know, points area there, and wants the dog receive the frisbee. What I find very funny is no matter how poorly you throw the frisbee and the dog butchers it, you always get the happy do 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 <laughs> So yeah, this is definitely was a nice expansion just for a throw-in title. I mean, this gives it that, you know, resorty theme. And I actually remember at the time, uh, I was fresh from coming back from Cabo San Lucas in Mexico at the re 
Rio Palace there, so that kind of, you know, me recapturing that at home here. So, uh, that's my collection here. I think other games that I remember having for the uh, Wii that I think I traded in. I think I, actually I remember I had Sonic and the Secret Rings there. and I think I traded that in, and which had that desert theme there. And then, uh, I think that's pretty much all it. I didn't trade too many. I mean, I had... I had the sports game. I mean, I remember having actually Tiger Woods uh, 09 there, which uh, that was a nice uh, golf game at the time there, and eventually get tired. I think I remember in that game, actually, the Banff Springs course was in that game, which definitely felt close to home, being that I'm here in Calgary, and a couple hour drive there, and I was just thinking, wow, Tiger Woods playing at Banff, virtually. That would have been something if he actually played in Banff, even today. But I remember that. I had the Wii Motion Plus there. And, and I mean, I think those are only the couple of Wii games that I think I remember having that I don't have anymore. But, uh, of course, that's what the next personal vlog is going to be there. So, yeah, that's, if you're still watching at this point, I mean, thanks for watching along. And hopefully it brought back some fun and memories or uh, maybe inspired to play some games again here. But, uh, as I say, I just don't have the time, you know, work, responsibilities, and been doing this more. Uh, and I enjoy doing this and uh, share it with you. But yeah, I'm just continuing on my uh, gaming memories phase there. So yeah, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey here, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders here, you know, make sure you hit subscribe and follow along here. Hit that bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload some other Calgary sports related or personal vlog. More game memories are to come here. And I still plan on recording a couple more episodes or episodes or whatever you call it there. And I also do attempt a comedy and as well share my experiences on my smartphone or camera there. So that sounds like everything you want to watch. So make sure you subscribe. Follow along here. Uh, sports gear on. So I'm going to say go Flames. Got to pay tribute to the Atlanta Flames as well here. And, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing these back too. Uh, you know, as yeah, in New Jersey. So, uh. As I say, go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video here.